All right, so we turn our attention now to athletics on this Friday edition of the Sports Max Zone. It's officially crunch time for Jamaican athletics. After day one of the J3A's National Junior and Senior Championships sped off on Thursday at the National Stadium in Kingston. And if the opening day is a sign of what to come, you can fasten your seat belts. On the women's side, Sprint Queens, Sharika Jackson and Shelly Ann Fraser Price both produced the sub-11 second performances in their respective first round heats. Jackson clocking 10.99 seconds, while Fraser Price clocked a season's best 10.98. But what came as the showstop on the night was 22-year-old Kishin Thompson speeding to a massive personal best in 9.82 seconds in his season opening first round run, equaling Oblique Seville's personal best run at the recent Racers Grand Prix. Tagore joined second in the world behind the world lead of 9.79 seconds set by Ferdinand Omanyala. Oblique Seville clocked a smooth 9.98 seconds while Akeem Blake clocked an impressive 9.95 seconds. As usual, once there's athletics, there's bound to be a Leighton Levy sighting and the Sportsmax Dodge TV lead writer and content manager joins us on set to discuss. Leighton, I know you're here, but your heart is, of course, at the National Stadium yes. and you're excited to, to get rid of us so you can go <laughs> and watch the action. But I'm happy that you're here with us and let's start by talking about um, the most impressive performance that you would have seen. Last night, I think the impressive performance of the world would have seen is that opening 100 meter by Kishin Thompson. Yeah. That was his first race of the season because he should have opened a few weeks ago when he had a cramp mid race and did not complete the race. So, this is his first full run for the season. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at that and saw 9.82, which joins him at with Oblique Seville, and we saw how impressive Seville was at the, at the race of the Grand Prix. It, it sets up a very interesting night tonight at the National Stadium in the semifinals and the finals where we possibly could see four or five men under 10 seconds because not only were um, Oblique Seville and Kishin Thompson impressive, but so was Ryan Ford, so was Akeem Blake, so was uh, uh, Ford, Julian Ford. You know, so you're looking at uh, the, the re-emergence of the Jamaican men's sprint power because I, I got a WhatsApp message last night from a friend of mine in Canada saying Jamaican men are back and I'm like it certainly seems that way but you know we still have some ways to go because Paris is still a month away and um, the reality is that what you do now counts for nothing if you can't replicate that performance in August when track and field starts at the Olympic Games. Yeah, but at a time like this, it's um, trials, Leighton and of course, you know, everybody is seeing this sensation, Kishin Thompson. You can have an idea. I, I get what you say where you can't tell what will happen in Paris, but you can get an idea as to what to expect. Yeah. And based on what you've seen from Kishin, do you think he has what it takes to at least medal when it comes in Paris? Well, if he runs like he ran last night and runs to the tape, which he didn't last night because he started chopping his strides from about 30 meters out, he looks like he's ready to run somewhere between 975 and possibly 970, which would make him, to me, in Paris, certainly the Olympic champion. Is there anything mysterious about him, though, Double L? Because I remember Stephen Francis telling Ricardo in an interview last week that he has had injury issues in the past that prevented him from training the way he could or should train to maximize his potential. But last year at the Nationals, he ran in the first round, was very, very impressive. 991. And then we didn't see him after that. Yeah. So there's something mysterious about him. It is, and, and it's because of his, his fragility. Huh? He's not been able to stay healthy for long, which is one of the reasons why I alluded to going ahead to Paris. Because the reality is he's had a number of injury issues over the years, and it's one of the reasons why we haven't seen him before. Because he's been at MVP for a number of years, but he's not been able to have a full season yeah. because of these injury yeah. issues. Francis said he found a remedy in Australia, though, and has sorted it out. So 
the impression Coach Francis left us with is that he has sorted the problems out and we are now ready to see the best of Kishane well, Thompson. The, if the problems are sorted, God bless the rest of the world because there's nobody's going to beat him because, look, not put that thing in perspective for people. No Lyles ran full tilt at the U.S. trials. Remember, he's a world champion from last year in Budapest. He ran full tilt at the U.S. trials, holding off the challenge of uh, Fred Curley and, of course, uh, Kenny Bednarik. And this kid opens up with 982, which is faster than that 983. And I think he did say in that interview last week, Lance, that he's, a, he's at this stage of their careers, he's ahead of where Asafa Paul was. And we know how good Asafa Paul was at this stage of his career. So if he's better than Asafa, you're looking at somebody who's better than running 977, which is ridiculous considering that this kid just hasn't raced much over the last couple yeah. of years. And, and he, the, the current top flight sprinters in the world at the moment aren't necessarily big men. Um, this, this guy is big, he's, over six feet and big and strong. He's massive and he's yeah. muscular, he's powerful. And he exploded from the block, blocks last night. I was like, wow, mm -hmm. you know, because he just, he just blew past everyone early and then established a yeah. commanding lead and yeah. that he didn't yeah. relinquish. I know that we're into sensation and uh, the immediacy of what he did. But Oblique Seville looked very, very smooth oh last Lord. night as well. He, Listen, he looked almost effortless in his, his sub-10 blocking. Oblique Seville did not leave second gear last night around 998. He literally bounced the race yes. last night and looking around as if he's out for an evening stroll. He kind of looked like what you do when you're just starting to warm up to go to training. That's, That's right. how good he looked. That's, That's how right. relaxed he was. Yeah. For 998 suggests also that he's in really good shape. And we saw that 982 at the, National, at the Racers Grand Prix and the idea that well i was told that he was capable he was planning to go 9.75 on the night so he's already in 97 shape and what we saw last night along with kishay and Thompson, suggests that if they push each other we could see something that we've never seen a national stadium before perhaps a sub 97 time 9.6 plus possibly that's that's a huge statement yeah. that's a huge okay. statement to make but i'm making it because when you, I look back at the races, yeah. I think see it's where it's very possible. Mm. Yeah. How about their former training partners, Shelly Ann Fraser-Price and Sherika Jackson? Well, Both looked impressive look, last Shelley, night. Well, let good. me borrow a phrase from Stuart Scott, the late Stuart Scott from ESPN. Shelly looked as cool as the other side of the pillow. <laughs> she was so effortless. She cruised to a, a 1098 clocking, and you know it's clear that she's ready to run a lot faster. She came out of the blocks hard, yes, but then she shut it down really early, and it was all business. As you can see the look on her face, she's all business. She's ready to kill people, and it's, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens tonight when she lands up against what looks like a very strong field because Sasha Lee Forbes looked really good. Jodine Williams looked really good. Sherika Jackson, we know, was going to come and run, ready to run fast, and we are hearing that Tia Clayton has surpassed her sister so far, the two-time world under-20 champion, and surpassed her and is ready to run very fast tonight. So we could see five women running 10 eights or faster tonight. It's going to be necessary, if what we are hearing is true, it's going to be necessary. Somebody could run 10 eight and not make that team. Mm -hmm. yeah. as on, on an individual basis, that is. Yeah, well, we're looking forward to tonight. But, you know, Leighton, just to rewind a bit, coming into this Jamaica National Trials, one of the themes that was of course making the headlines was that word injury right and it was being applied to both the Shelley and Fraser Price and Sharika Jackson mm -hmm. can we say now that we saw um, the first race we can take that word and toss it out of the window or do you think that did you see signs of any one of them carrying a niggle no there was there was no sign of anybody looking that they were hampered by an injury last night both women Sharika and Shelley looked really comfortable they didn't seem to be halting in anything that they did there. They went through their phases quite comfortably. And there was no stress. I mean, when you're running with injury, and this is something I'm talking from experience, you tend to even have a grimace, even when you're not conscious of it, because you're conscious of the injury. What we saw from Shelly and, and Sherika last night were completely relaxed sprinters, confident that they were able, they're going to be able to run at their best at this juncture uh, to, to qualify for the team. So I'm, I'm not particularly concerned about any injury worries that they may have had prior. Because that was what we saw last night was women, two women who were confident of running fast and running fast without any fear of injury. All right, these semifinals are going to be run after 7 o'clock local time tonight. Mm. The finals both will be run minutes to 10 tonight. Mm. Um, the semifinal lineups.
for the, the, the women, as you just mentioned, setting up for some interesting reading and um, possible, well, they'd have to run fast because the athletes looked so good last night that no one can take chances in the semis. Look at that semifinal, for example. Alana Ritia, Clayton, Crystal Slowly, Sasha Lee Forbes, Sherika Jackson, Alani Thomas. Um, all of those women right now, that's going to be probably the, the toughest group because Sasha Lee Forbes is going to have to run fast. Sherika, he's going to push Sherika Jackson. Crystal Slowly, who we've seen run 10.99 so far this year, is going to be ready to run, as well as Tia Clayton. So you're looking at, and it's two, it's three semifinals. So it's going to be the top two plus the next two fastest times. Somebody of that, of that very stacked heat is going to be left behind tonight. And it's, it's going to be interesting to see who it is because based on a conversation that I had this morning, Sasha Lee Forbes is in the form of her life and we're hearing that Tia Clayton is the same. Yeah. If we're, if we're saying that Sherika Jackson is the favorite to win that heat, then who gets left behind? Mm. It's because it's going to be ridiculous. So it's going to be fast. And I think we could see the first signs here of you know, where that, those tennis are going to come from. I think this heat with Shelly and Fraser Price and Jodine Williams, Johnny Smith, Ashanti Moore is a lot easier. Natasha Morris, I think, and Kemba Nelson are probably going to be the biggest threats. But I think Shelly and Fraser Price cruises from this semifinal heat. And the battle between Kemba Nelson, Jodine Williams, and Natasha Morrison will be the ones who decide who gets into the, into the finals yeah. um, from, from this heat as well. I mean, Jodine Williams, if she runs according to how I hear she's planning to run tonight, she may, she may edge it, you know, so it's going to be very interesting to see. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's and look quickly at the men's, men's semifinals now because uh, those are setting up for some interesting well, runs as well. this looks like <laughs> this is a ridiculous seat. Look, Akeem Blake looks good, 995 last night. And if he runs well, he should make it. Kishin Thompson, yeah, based yeah. on what we saw last night, will, will be unchallenged in this seat. Kedron Golson and, of course, Jelani Walker and Sandra Davison, 10 flat and, and you know, 10-21 last night. I think, <laughs> for me, Kishin Thompson winning this seat and Akeem Blake is a close second, but he's going to have to work to hold off right yeah, The forward. former Stets runner Sachin Dennis Piard yeah. last night with his 10.04 as well, yeah. which, which got lost, which got lost in the, in the flurry of, Listen, of brilliant performances. Kasho, Shakur too. Williams last night ran his personal best and still came seventh in his heat. Wow. And of course, this heat, um, Oblique Seville wins this heat quite comfortably. Okay. Um, with possibly Julian Fort and Ron Watson and Brian Lavelle. Those three are going to battle for the, for the second spot because I think they're each closely matched in terms of speed, but based on what we saw last night. Travis Williams at USC transferred from Albany 10-1-3. Looks like he look, he's recovered from the injury that he suffered earlier this season. But I just don't think he gets past that, that lanes 4, 5 and 6 tonight. Mm. It's going to be tough. Mm. And there are some people are going to be disappointed. But it is what it is. Mm -hmm. there, there are some really fast heats yeah. lined up for tonight. All right, well, we're going to go to a break now, Leighton, because we still have some more to discuss here, as well as take a quick peep onto what happened in the Bahamas. And uh, a, 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 a story that is breaking for us up at the National Stadium. We are hoping to join Ricardo Chambers for that during the next segment as well. So we'll be back on the other side of the break.